انا جد اذا هاد ابنك او لا لو يهودي ابطال اما عربي تعرفوش الشيء عم نفحص ما كوري ما بنش holographics. Amazing. It's just amazing. The NFDA is the largest funeral director's organization, and they've got the single largest convention in the country. If you've got anything to do with the funeral industry, you're here. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> this is great. near any of our products and up comes a full digital footprint of that person all their social media links picture albums video albums even a gps location of where that person may be at Ooh. celebrate life today that's right let my values guide you why wouldn't you want to do this for your own legacy and say it yourself from your heart what was important to you in your life with no filter your words your image but this gives you an idea of how realistic it is. That's what you would look like in your eulogy or your life legacy when you're talking about yourself. So everything you see here that we create is fully customizable. If you think it, we can make it. You know, it's all about making that dream come to reality. This is Beloved. We write custom personalized obituaries and we turn over a custom piece within 30 hours or less. This is a handful of home beautifully crafted containers holding pure Irish earth. It allows families to lay their loved ones to rest in the very earth of their ancestors. We provide biodegradable and eco-friendly mm -hmm. urns and caskets for those alternative consumers that maybe don't want embalming or traditional caskets or traditional burials. Many of the funeral homes don't use the word urn anymore as much as they use the word memorial art because there are so many options. You can take cremated remains and place them in a sculpture, give them to an artist and put them inside portraiture or interwoven inside of the glass. In the next 10 years, I believe a lot of funeral homes will end up closing just because they're afraid of change. Those who are unafraid of change, they will be very successful.
My dad passed away a handful of months ago, and I'm here with my Auntie Brenda and my mother to offer his cremains to the ocean. Oh, you've got that picture. That's great. <laughs> and as you see, he loved boating, and we loved fishing. A lot of that yeah. happened. Uh, this is my favorite picture. I know, that's so beautiful. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. He loved the ocean and spent his whole life on the water. So I did research and spent a lot of time on trying to figure out what would be right, how to honor him, what felt good. And um, I wish he, um, he could know um, the decision I made. Because I know how much he would love it. Um, I know um, how much the ocean meant to him. These are my dad's cremated remains. I'm finding it very hard to let go, but um, putting them in a, in a good place to rest is, uh, is the idea. We've been waiting for a resting place. We've been waiting to do something very, very significant. And it's happening. So this is allowing us to go forward in a very positive way. Just don't want to let them go. As much as I, I feel that it's part of um, the process, and you know, just holding on to them didn't quite feel right as well, but um, still, I don't want to let them go. Okay, so if we have to do this, let's do it. <laughs> My family used to have these big funerals in a cemetery, and um, my brothers and I both have very bad memories of that. <laughs> we don't, you? Yeah, we didn't like that. Well, all of our family were in this Brooklyn cemetery, the grandparents, the uncles and aunts, and it was like this Sunday afternoon thing to do. We just didn't like it. So this is a very different way to, uh, very different way to honor somebody. I think. Absolutely. It's a very good thing to do. It's going to be very yes. good for her. She has not had time to grieve. These are called layer cakes. And these are actually, uh, this is all part of the, the plan for, you know, helping to rebuild the environment and create new habitat. Our whole goal is making people understand that reef loss is serious. You know, in Hawaii, you know, the coral bleaching has devastated the reefs. The Great Barrier Reef has been really devastated by coral bleaching. Engineered reefs are one of the solutions that can help trying to offset the reef that's already been lost. When we place your father's remains in our reef, we mix the ashes and the concrete in a small container, which then gets cemented inside the reef ball. That structure is gonna last 500 years or more. And that is the legacy. Not only is it a resting place for your loved one, but it is an active producing part of the environment. It's creating new life and will do so for hundreds of years to come. This is awesome. Isn't I mean, it? it's so awesome. Oh, it feels like... so good to be a part of. Okay, so what we're gonna ask you to do is pour the ashes into this bucket. Can I mix it by hand? If you'd like.
well mixed. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready, dear. Okay. Do you need a hand with that? Nope. Can you handle that? Yep. Okay. These are just to keep them company. Um, have you got more chalk? Yes. I'm going to grab one of them. Yes. This is my Sunday morning routine. Prepare mom and dad's medication for the week. Dad, he has COPD and he has lung cancer and he's got cancer in his liver and he's got renal failure. Mom has Parkinson's and mom has diabetes. It's been rough on the family because there's five boys and one girl and we all have uh, jobs, and we all have responsibilities, and we all have to 
live our lives, but in the past year and a half, we've learned to alter our lives to take care of mom and dad now, because that's, they did a good job taking care of us, now we need to take care of them. And, you know, they're good parents. I wouldn't trade them. I got to tell everybody I got the best job in the world. I take care of mom and dad. I get to drink a cup of coffee with my mother and father every morning. And then I do my life. Hey, bro. Here you go. Breakfast? Huh? Making breakfast today? Yeah. You ready to eat again? Yeah. <laughs> They served you coffee. Is that your first cup or your second? No, this is my third <gasps> cup. Your third cup. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. But I was thinking that breakfast is up there. There you go, Daddy. Wipe his face down. Here, sit down here. How's he look now, Mom? Okay. Good? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is my mom's parents, and this is my grandma's parents, and that's my grandpa's parents. My grandpa was born in Seguin, Texas, and my grandma, these are her parents. They are Mexico descendants. This is daddy here. They used to pick fields to make money, and that's actually where my mom and dad met, is on the fields. That's when they got married. They were teenagers at the time. Very young, just babies. They didn't know what they were doing, but they sure did do something right. <laughs> it's very important to know where you came from. This is my little Cuevas Museum, <laughs> our museum of love, a museum of life. for the blessings of tonight. We ask you to bless us within our week, especially this coming Sunday for my daddy as we celebrate his life. We ask you to bless this food we're about to eat and the hands that prepared it and all those that are in need. In your grateful name we pray. I see everybody around me. And I love it when all my family is around me. Especially, I got some grandkids and great grandkids. They're the most important little things of my life. <laughs> I'm going to feel great. I'm going to feel the luckiest person in the world. Do you see it is? That's a quail with chicken right there.
I want to thank everybody for showing up and uh, let you know how much I appreciate all of you all, especially my brothers, my sister, and my wife and my kids, and I'm proud of them too. I want to thank all of you. everyone for coming today to my daddy's living wake my daddy's come a long way and daddy we're proud of you we love you for who you are we're grateful for everything you've given us dad and I'm especially grateful for the woman you raised me to be and I know my brothers are grateful for the men that you raised we love you very much I love you too he knows that we love him. I tell him every day I can, because one day I'm not going to be able to tell him with his face. That's what the wake is about. It's about making sure the guy that's leaving knows he's loved. I process death by just facing it. It's like, this is what's happening. This is what's been given to me. Death is part of life. When they told me that I had pancreatic cancer, my doctor, he just took one look at me and said, this is not good and you need to get your affairs in order. For most of my life, I thought that I would be cremated, but I chose a green burial because being able to give back to the earth just really resonated with me. You'll get to see Eloise Woods' it's peak oh, flowering season. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to go out here. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, you know, people will ask, why are you taking off work and, you know, Oh, I'm going, you know, going with my friend to pick out her burial plot. <laughs> like the, the... It stops the conversation. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, that's right. Here it is. Back to nature. Back to nature. Twist. Right. Hello. Yeah. Oh, I'm TJ. Yeah. So instead of TJ, PJ, you're gonna be Barbara. Okay. Because I will yep. never get these right. Okay. Yep. yep. <laughs> Barbara, fine. that's fine. First, there's something I wanted uh, you to take BJ to see, but okay. I don't want her to know the name of it until we get there. So you're gonna whisper this. <laughs> yes. Or I can point. Or you can point. <laughs> say a lot of people like that name. Well, so, and so. I will let her explain the uh, significance. significance when we get there. So you can show her anything except just cover that up. <laughs> I'll be a surprise. Okay. <laughs> that's fairly new. 
she was just in a, in a shroud, and so there's not too much soil. But in a natural burial park, we dig relatively shallowly because it's in the first feet of topsoil that are all the elements that would help a body go back to nature as quickly as possible. Sure. I think this is so neat. Yeah. So over here, this is called Quiet Time Garden. It's where my plots are, and that's my mother. She was just buried in August. Aww. Wow. And my plots are going to be around the corner where there's more of those yellow flowers. And I have like six cats that are over there Aww. waiting for me. You could even have a tree right here. Yep. If you want to be around a lot of yep. my crazy cats. family members and cats. <laughs> ah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So this is the division. and. Um, so you can see how there's a whole big area right there. Yep. And you can see there's going to be a lot of sun. Yep. This oh. is called Moon Dancer Garden. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're going to explain the significance oh of God. what that means to you? The email that I've had for, what, 40 years is Moon Dancer. Oh, really? <laughs> a lot of people love the name, and they go, I want to be buried in Moon Dancer Garden. I want to be buried in Moon, Dancer, in Moon Dancer. I do, too. OK, so let's talk about what's available here, then, because Almost I think... anything you see. If you want, I could go out and put it one of my orange flags. It could be as close to the trail as you want, or you could come all the way back here. I'll just put this kind of in the middle. That looks good. All right. So, but now, if you like Moon Dancer, you can picture yourself in that spot and you know where you're going to be. Some people come and they'll like lay down on the ground and look up and go, OK, so this is what I'm going to be looking at. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it, though, because you'll get chiggers. Yeah. <laughs> chiggers I don't need yeah, with all my other problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can, you can imagine it now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can. All right, off we go. The day of my death, how I envision it, all I want to do is pass with grace and dignity. TJ and her mother, Janie, have agreed to come and wash my body. The fact that they're doing that, I mean, it, it uh, it's very humbling, really, <laughs> you know? That's a big ask. I think that's a big ask of people, you know? But um, it's just, it's love, really. It's just the overwhelming feeling of love and support, so unconditional. And that's it. <laughs> Let's make a circle around Barbara. Good morning, friends. I want to welcome you here today as we remember the love and the light that Barbara reflected into our world. She was adamant that she wanted her life to go into uh, the life of something else. So we'll be planting a tree. She wanted it planted with her because she wanted to begin nurturing the tree right away. Okay. 
think so. I think we need some strong people in the middle. Slowly on my count. One, two, three, gently. for my daddy, Adam. He used to tell my mom to shoot him into space when he dies. I found this after he passed as I was searching for what I could do to honor him. We're sending her on her final adventure and we know that she's here with us and that she is so excited. This is symbolically his flight to the great beyond. He loved space so much when he was a kid to as an adult. My father was not ready to die. He did not have plans to die. He did not have a will. Uh, but the only thing we really knew for sure that he wanted was the Memorial Space Flight. My father, Tuna, was a really <laughs> incredible guy. Uh, he had a variety of interests throughout his life. He was fascinated by space and time travel and um, the possibilities for that, but he was pretty confident that in his lifetime he would never get to space. And sending some of his material to space, he didn't think about it like my spirit is going to space. He thought about it like we're just sending a little bit of humanity up there to see what happens and into the unknown. And he definitely wanted to be a part of that. Hey! You made it! Yay! How are you? Good. You ready for this destination funeral? <laughs> I love that. This is the mission control. This is a mostly NASA-funded mission, and we are always what's called a secondary payload. And basically, almost all rockets overperform. They have more ability to lift than they sell. So we just tuck ourselves in and hitch a, hitch a ride, and that's <laughs> really been the thing that allows Celestis to exist. OK, welcome in, guys. Next to Jerry is actually our firing box. You can see one. Uh, red case that's toggled up, that is the button that will be pushed to fire the rocket. Wow. 
<laughs> and who are, who are you here for? My son. Your son. Nice. His favorite phrase was, let me off this planet. <laughs> So we managed it. So we have. Oh, I had a feeling we might be a group of characters. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. You're right on that. Right on the money. I think we are. Welcome, everybody, to Launchpad One. Your payloads are in that blue nose tip in the very front. If you look up there just above the American flag, that's where they are. Uh, the first time we did this uh, uh, years ago, um, I had never done something like that, and Charlie had approached us, and it's very touching. You know, so we're all thinking about you. We will be tomorrow as well. When my father died, I was not ready because I wanted my children to get more from him. He was such an incredible human being. And I think this is a unique opportunity to say we saw a rocket launch, and part of our grandfather was on that rocket. Guys, okay, come guys, come here. Does this remind you of tuna? <laughs> Isn't this awesome? So when your grandpa tuna died, I brought it to the memorial, and I had tons of people sign it. And so it's filled with things of people remembering tuna. And so I want to give this to you guys so you'll have it so you can learn more about your grandpa tuna. So here you go. <laughs> it is I know. I know what it is. 45 seconds. Stand by for T minus 30 second on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus 30 seconds and counting. The vehicle is armed. Woo! Yes. <laughs> My fraternal count at T minus 10, 9, 8, eight 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. My observation about the way people die, at least in America, is they either don't or are not allowed the opportunity to be part of the process. From my way of thinking, the part that bothers me just immensely is not being allowed to be part of that process. It's my death. Go with what you believe, but don't tell me what I have to do. I know that you saw Dr. Ganju down at Stanford again in November, and that was after the last CT scan of the lungs. Yeah. 
So what's your understanding of that CT scan? My lungs are full of little nodules. Yeah. And it's um, commonly called metastasis. Metastasis, oh, and, and yeah. it's, they're just they're growing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's obvious to me mm -hmm. that we have just a limited amount of time. Okay. How much time that is, I don't know. Right. Um, but we're going to go down the path until we have yeah. none. Yeah. We have the end of life medication. Yeah. It's at home in a box up in the top of the closet. Yeah. If it's. Okay, I'd like to just review um, I think what we need great. to do with uh, taking the medication. So it, it can't be taken in a public location. Right. If you needed help with preparing the medication, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. But actually drinking or taking the medication, that's something that you need to do yourself. There's a lot of narcotic in it. So you slip into a coma within a few minutes, and then typically people have passed within half an hour. It's hard to fathom I go to sleep and that's the end of it. Right. Okay? I'll never know any, anything different. Right. You can talk about losing your husband. You can talk about going through this. But it, 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 it still is, is a really difficult process. But it still feels like the yes. right decision. Yeah. 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 There's so the scapula's been removed. This is where the scapula is ending, and then like, this is it. This shouldn't be here, right here, this lump. Is it tender when I'm pushing on yep. it? Yep. Yeah. Huh. All righty. Thank you, Doc. You're very welcome. <laughs> it has been a pleasure. Oh. It has been a pleasure. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. OK, you all set? This is our little box of end-of-life medications. We've been keeping this up in our closets for safety purposes. So here's the recipe, what we should mix, how it's to be taken. And this is the morphine combination. When I get to the point where I'm either bedridden, chair-ridden, I'll be able to use this set of medicines to end my life in a way that I choose. That'll happen um, when it happens. <laughs> Sometime in the uh, future, we're hoping for a, a, a long way off, but we'll see. Yep. Okay? That's it. Okay. We'll know where they're at. All right. <clears throat> When I think about my death, Thank you. it's bothersome to me not knowing what it's going to be like. Is there anything after that? How can I miss my loved ones, my dear wife? who has been with me for 57 years, if it's possible to miss her, I will miss her every single moment. I've accepted the fact that I'm dying. There's nothing I can do to stop it. Uh, I, can, I can make it uh, as productive as it can be and planning the final days of my life gives me a sense of participation and satisfaction.
We have done in this shop and together hundreds of projects. And in the 30 years that we've been doing them, I have learned so much from Dick on um, layout, thinking, um, engineering, um, just everything. And, and yet this is the one project I wish to hell we didn't ever have to build. You're not going to lie down, are you? <laughs> you looked like you were thinking about it. Okay. Whoa, wow. So, we're going to have to uh, be very clever about this. Oh, because the nails. Uh... My goodness, that looks beautiful. Whoa. It worked, huh? Isn't that amazing? My goodness. I haven't seen that many caskets in my life. I've seen some metal ones that I thought were kind of, uh, that I didn't like. And I've seen cardboard ones, which were rudimentary at best. I think I, this is very elegant looking in its simplicity, and I like that very much. Now, just, if I can store it for another six months, <laughs> maybe a year, that'd work. But... I think what you were trying to say, honey, is rough hewn. But elegant. <laughs> yes. well, well, you, should know that, you should know that he rehearsed that line one time. <laughs> it matches me perfectly. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's get a top. Okay. Trying to set this area up for about 40 people. And it's 40 people starts filling this up pretty fast. We uh, decorated with a sign up on the on the wall. And it kind of sets the tone for the event. We're here to celebrate life. All of it but especially the end. My end. <sighs> Hi, how are you doing? For anybody that's so inclined, we have my coffin lid in the multi-purpose room. And there are pens there. Feel free to write upon it, uh, but try to keep it clean. <laughs> Cheerful checking out. Cheerful check. Here's to checking out cheerfully. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this is the first celebration of life I've been to where I get to say goodbye to the celebrants. So, thank you for that opportunity. It's easy to live well. It's harder to die well. So you do it well. Yes. I'll work on it. You can do it the best. Okay. All right. So no time soon, I hope. I'm I'm checking out Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Uh, it's I I want to go out well, well, you still with a quality of life. Yeah. Okay. And I can feel it deteriorating. I know it's happening. I want it to be on my terms. Yeah. Tuesday morning is it. Um, Dick, I don't know what to say, so you just I love you and I appreciate you. And this was a wonderful, wonderful gathering. It was. It was a lot of fun. We enjoyed each other. That's what it's all about.
frankly, it's difficult for me to watch the people watching me. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their discomfort as to what to say. Geez, you look great, Dick. I, hot, dang, I feel wonderful. And to some extent, that's true. And I do apparently look pretty good. Um, but I ain't. And I ain't ever going to be. In terms of terminating my life, my mind has been satisfied with that decision since the very beginning. And tomorrow will be the culmination of that. It'll just be a question of saying goodbye. Here's to a family gathering like, okay. like none other will ever be. Is this a Last Supper? Are we supposed to pose? Yeah. Pose? No. Oh, no. I think we should. We I talked about it. Tw are we, do we have 12, whatever they're called? No. 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 We only got two I'm actors eating. here. I am eating okay. <laughs> Did you want to hear the rendition of Amazing Grace that we have? We're going to set the speaker on top of your coffin as we're carrying you. Ah, uh, and I didn't bring the speaker. We have a speaker. We have a speaker. That I think, but it no offense, but it has a little better back. sound than yours does. I think we should all just go downstairs and let's do it. Down. I think it's pretty all impactful right. downstairs. Okay. She can do it. Are we going to go? We're yeah. going to go listen yeah. to Amazing Grace. <laughs> oh, goodness. You got no room. <laughs> Great, we're all sitting here pulling tears. God, Facebook is gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Sure. You gotta do this without me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're thinking Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> you did ask to have this. I, I did. You. I did. I wanted this. Yeah. Oh. It, it's really pretty. We don't, we don't have to go through the whole thing, but <laughs> I just wanted you guys together. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love you guys. That music was... It's beautiful. It is. It's it absolutely is. gorgeous. It is. <sighs> well, I'm glad you got a chance to talk with the kids that way. I well, think that they appreciated it. It looked like a good opportunity to say it what was I was perfect. That trying worked, to say. That worked out really well. I think that to be able to be genuine in a really genuine moment, um, that counts for a lot. So do you have anything that you want to do tomorrow morning at all? Do you have anything that you've left undone that you wanted to do? Not that I'm aware of. OK. OK. It is 9.56. Do you want to mix it? Do you want Wade to mix it? He's standing right there. You think he's competent? I think he's competent. Think he <laughs> Anybody can mix it. I have to consume it. OK, without assistance. OK. So you need, you need to be over on the couch. Yes, I do. OK. All right, folks.
I'm going to say this real quick. I just want to thank you for everything. <laughs> for the last 35 years of teaching, and, uh, we and I want that to be the last thing I say, so I'm going to walk over here. But, and good luck. Likewise. I love you all. All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Was it grim? No. Not bitter? It wasn't bad. Okay. You'll do fine. I will do fine. Make sure you do. I will. I will do fine. It feels too early to lay down. Oh, don't lay down. You can still sit here and tell jokes. What if I but... fall down? Oh, not a problem. I'm a therapist. I know how to get you into bed. <laughs> oh, goodness. You all have been so good through this whole thing, and I regret the pain that it may cause you. Yeah. Just know that I love you, each and every one of you. Dearest Dick, you and Delua have been on my mind and in my prayers daily. I'm going to be looking to the heavens as you take flight. Give my dad a hug if you run into him. Next one is I love you very, very much. I have learned so much from you and consider your friendship a wonderful gift. I will miss your dry humor and unselfish spirit. So this is just part of the process, not to worry. This is just breathing at the end of life. The body's just working hard here. Do you want time alone? I'm fine. You can't hear me. We've, we've talked and said everything we wanted to say. So I think that he's passed, whatever that means. I think that, that he's gone.
Well, Ryan and I have always been very open and honest with our kids when they ask questions. We try to give them the truth in a way that, you know, a five-year-old can understand. And, you know, we've never wanted to lie or to sugarcoat anything. This is Garrett being Garrett. And he wasn't eating his cookie. He took my mashed potatoes instead of a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Jump and roll. But even on chemo, he had all that energy. Even taking chemo, that, that was that nasty stuff. He was still doing push-ups. You know, I think back about life before Garrett got sick, and, you know, we, we really had felt like we had everything. Um, we had a, a great house, a great family. Um, we got to do all of the things that we wanted to do. Once Garrett got diagnosed with cancer, everything just changed. This was his make-a-wish trip, and he had such a good time, even though he wasn't feeling the greatest. And ultimately, we ended up having to get him a wheelchair because he just couldn't walk. But even so, he would be like, Mommy, take a picture of me, and Mommy, look at me. And he was just so sweet. Beautiful, isn't it? When it's dark outside, they, they all glow. It makes it very beautiful. I bet we just light the candles and leave the illuminaries in there because you can't really see them. So this was Delphina's idea. We've been pulling some of Garrett's favorite things in here. He loved Batman, so we picked out um, the Batman figures and he used to always carry around um, a koozie of Batman um, that we have down on the bottom. And this is the uh, blue bunny that he used to take all the time at the hospital. And then we have um, Thor. He loved superheroes, so we have Thor's hammer, um, as well as some other Batman stuff. This is something that reminds her of Garrett and brings her closer to Garrett and that helps. When we got the news that he was terminal, um, we never actually told Garrett that he was gonna pass away, that, that he wasn't gonna live. Um, we, we just started talking a lot about how um, not everybody wins their battle with cancer. And, um, you know, we just really started having some of those conversations that you never wish that you had to have with your children. Um, we tried to do it as organically as we could. Um, you know, we'd pass a, a cemetery and Garrett would say, you know, you know, why are funerals sad? You know, I don't, you know, funerals shouldn't be sad or why do you go to funerals if they're sad? And um, that's when we started talking and he'd say things, well, at my funeral, I want five bouncy houses because I'm five years old and I want snow cones and I want Batman to come to my funeral and you know, those types of things. And so it really spawned for us our want to help Garrett um, have his wishes come true. So he couldn't be here with us, but we could make his funeral not sad. At first, I wanted a funeral, but then I started thinking, you know, he didn't want that. He wanted his bouncy houses, he wanted his snow cones, he wanted Batman. So we made sure of all that. We wanted to make sure people were happy and having fun here. So we did exactly what he wanted. It just felt right. We had a celebration of life that was very non-traditional and very uh, happy. People weren't used to that, right? This is something different, and they didn't know what to expect. Everybody got really into the celebration, and it was fun. It was very much like a carnival. 
It was very healing to see the beautiful things and all of the kids having a great time. There were so many kids here and the laughter and they were running around playing and, um, you know, really celebrating Garrett's life instead of um, being sad because he had passed away. Yeah. Death comes so quickly. You don't think about it until it's happening and then you fall into tradition and call a funeral home and you kind of fall into that routine because it's safe and it's the norm. Through everything, what I learned is that we're the biggest advocates for our family, for ourselves, and it's okay to be different. It's okay to do whatever makes you happy. It's okay to do something special that's out of the ordinary, non-traditional, to, to celebrate and to honor somebody's life. We can do the things that are important to us and still have all of the support from the family and from our community. It's okay to talk about what you want after you pass away. It's okay to have those conversations. Death doesn't have to be scary. Hold true to what you want and make it happen.